My dad came back because he'd been at the pub, had a few drinks with his mates Christmas Eve. Um, he came back when the winds were getting really strong. And um, yeah, and then it, um, he was getting really frightened and he kept saying, oh, if anything happens to me, because we live in a rural area, all bushlands around us, only one house behind us, he'll have to crawl along the fence line and try and go to the neighbour's house, which is a fair way down the road. And um, But we end up moving around the house, trying to find a safe place and we, because we could hear a lot of banging and noise and we knew things were really bad. So we went to the lounge room. I said, let's go into the lounge, it's a big room. We walked in there and then I seen the wall of the house going and the Christmas tree and all the presents I just finished wrapping just got um, sucked out of the room. Crew were quite uh, good. We we're all in the wheelhouse. Everyone was all together. Um, we thought, you know, we could handle it. Uh, once the boy, we broke from the boy, we actually steamed parallel lines in line with Stokes Hill Wharf. Uh, going into the waves, it was quite rough pitching up and down. Uh, the ship rolled so far, about 85, 90 degrees from the vertical and actually set off one of the life boys on the side. And the next thing we knew because of visibility very low was hitting Stokes Hill Wharf. We uh, hit the Stokes Hill Wharf and then we realised we're actually on the bend. Um, so a number of sailors went up over the top of the bridge wing um, they weren't going quick enough. I actually went down one of the sides of the ship, the port side, to see if I could get there and trying to climb up, I was physically blown off the ship by the wind and ended up in the water. I think a number of us ended up in the water in the end. Tragically, we lost two sailors, the, the buffer, Petty Officer Les Catton and Able Seaman Engineer uh, Ian Rennie. Um, both of them were you know, valuable members of the ship's crew. Um, we believe Les got to the wharf and was hit by a 44 gallon drum. Um, both he and Ian were found in the water next morning above the ship with uh, Kevin Rainbow, who was one of the electrical rates who had badly damaged legs, and the navigator, who was, um, had pneumonia for about 12 months after that. One of the firemen come out of the fire station and he'd come over to, to see us, see if it was all right. And he said, I'll oh, come over to the, to the uh, fire, fire station. So when he was hanging on the side of the ute, and uh, when he went back, it was only oh, 30 metres, I suppose. He walked, as he's walking past the big power pole on the corner, this gust of wind got him, and he went straight up in the air. And uh, as he went past the pole, he just wrapped his arms around the power pole, and he's he straight out like this. Anyhow, when the wind dropped, he got off and he ran back to the to the fire station and he waved us in and I went over there and was in about oh, three rooms from the outside of the building. Went in there and it was just full of water and broken glass and and the, all, the, all his boys were sitting in there. I just sat there till she quietened down a bit.